just one final thing for me. I think uh, following on a little bit from what Dex said, every young boxer, even Olympians, come in and have to make a lot of noise. And I think the old guard, the traditionalists that we write for and create content for, they get angry by it. I think there's been a few defeats recently for people that have come up as influencer or YouTube boxer. And if anything, I think it creates a bit of division, which could be healthy. You know, you guys aren't going anywhere. You're huge events, you're huge deals. But I think perhaps that little divide might, might even better. Perhaps you've even gained more. Yeah, I mean, I'm not in the YouTube boxing world. Uh, so that, that whole like, crazy tag team style stuff influencers versus influencers that was my first fight three and a half years ago and since then i've fought professional athletes or professional fighters so i'm not in that world my cards are filled with world champions the best of the best the highest level competition um and that's what i think others should do they should come into the sport Obviously, it's cool to fight the influencers, but it's time to, like, take things more seriously. And I think that is what's important because I, I, I respect the sport of boxing so much, too. And I think that a lot of the stuff that they're doing is promote the fights. You know, these girls, like, flashing, taking their tops off in the ring. Like, all this stuff is a bit too much. And something you kind of started along with your brother, Logan, of course, the influencer boxing that we've discussed about. Recently, there, there's been a lot of things that are drawing negative attention to it and perhaps leaving a bad taste in people's mouth. What is your message to the entire influencer boxing industry as far as to how to uh, properly move about themselves moving forward? Yeah, just like it's tough because they're not going to listen. Like, I don't think it's my job, but like influencers and YouTubers and shit are crazy. So I don't know, but it's just tough because we want new eyeballs for the sport, but we don't want it to be like a gimmick. So, you know, just don't be a gimmick. Don't, don't like do cringe shit and get your skill up. You know, you want to promote yourself. You want to have big fights. You want to make a name for yourself. Start in the gym. You know, th that's, really what people don't realize like why I got so big was yeah I said a lot of things and I talked a lot of shit but if I wouldn't have been able to back it up no one would have cared and so when I was knocking people out flat cold that's really what made me the biggest one in the space and so focus more on your skill level versus doing the the these crazy PR stunts Oh, sorry. Hey, Jake, thanks for speaking with us today. Um, how much do you think your uh, boxing career rests on the result of this fight? With a loss, do you still have a, a flourishing boxing career? I mean, I would like to think so, you know, because after losing to Tommy, I landed myself a bigger name and a bigger fight. Um you know, in terms of just the ticket sales, everything, the commercial pay-per-view, everything is pointing to the, this being the biggest event ever. And I didn't think that would be possible after losing to Tommy. So it's interesting, man. And I guess you can't predict these things. It, but if the number one thing is if people want to see me fight, then I'll still ha have big fights. Um, so it's really the fan base that that drives people, right? It's like Deontay Wilder losing uh, a couple of times to Tyson Fury, but everyone still wants to see him fight. So it all just depends. And it's really how you go out. Um, it, you know, if you're going to get knocked out, then that's not good. But if you lose, you know, split decision, it's a war, it's a good fight, then it's a lot easier to come back from that.